Hi, I'm Virginia, the Visible co-founder of The Family Shop, and this is my first video, so please bear with me. If you follow us in social media or read our newsletter, you know that each week we interview feminists in the blog to hear about their journey, recommendations, and much more. This week we have interview for the web Neve Crawford Walker, founder of Goals. She told us all about her purpose to make women follow their passion, get out of their comfort zone and just go for the things they want. And it inspired me, but it also made me realize how much I was postponing doing videos because, well, because videos are scary. So here I am, publicly committed to be more out there. So what can you expect from these videos? Well, mostly feminism. Rants, questions, conversations with other feminists, a bit of me, a bit of us, the brand, our story. If there's anything you want to hear me talking about, just let me know. So I thought it would probably be easier to start with who I am and a little bit of my feminist journey. So I'm Virginia, I'm a Spanish, that's where the accent is coming from, and I live in Belfast, where the other side of the accent is coming from, where Chris, my husband, is from. We have two kids, Eric, four, and Nora, two. So for all parents out there, they're probably feeling my excitement, but also my exhaustion. And when Chris and I met over 10 years ago, wow, um, he was the cool, socially aware person of their relationship. I was in my last year of uni, about to start working in Deloitte, a big corporate company. And back then, I would argue against everything that I passionately defend now, including, if not specifically, feminism. I was not a feminist. I didn't need it. I was qualified. I looked around in my uni and most people were intelligent, capable women. It's funny how it didn't occur to me to check our class privilege. And I was repeating all those things that made sort of sense in the bubble. I didn't want a job because I was a woman. I wanted it because I was the best. Sometimes I think I would love to speak to that old me and tell her how wrong she was. But to be honest, most time I'm happy that she discovered it herself through our journey. I did say things and defended things that I am not proud of. And that is fine. I mean, I don't think I was an awful person by then, but I do think I was wrong. And I do believe that my wrongness was not helping to build the world I want to live in. I always say that it was my father-in-law who made me a feminist. I don't think he was really aware of the monster he was creating. And he didn't really explain feminism to me, but but what he did whenever I was given one of my very eloquent speeches about why I was not was roll his eyes and said, Virginia, of course you're a feminist. Everybody who is decent is. And that, to be honest, that really pissed me off because I knew, I knew I was right. So I went home and started to do some research because I really wanted to prove him wrong and show him with real data and with real facts what feminists really were. And awkward, it happened that I was a feminist after all, that I could stand behind what feminists were defending, and that it was not that radical idea of victimism that I thought it was. The next part of the journey was the very classic, I am a feminist, but you might be there, you might have been there, maybe you're not there, but you will. I mean, even one of the biggest icons of feminists, Dolly Parton, um, said the other day that she was a feminist, but she did not hate it, men's. I think um, it's very common just try to take away from all the stigma that that word seems to carry. Um, I'm a feminist, but I don't hate men, or I'm a feminist, but, I, but I'm not expecting any special treatment. I mean, to be honest, we don't need all those words. Feminists, in most cases, don't mean anything that is that controversial. But the parts where it is, Sometimes it's just a debate happening within the movement. 
actually, I think that's exciting. We are building this, we're building this together. That is one of the most important things I've learned. They're not set things that you have to believe as a credo when you call yourself a feminist. The only thing is that we need a more equal world with real equal opportunities for everyone, no matter what their gender is. The keyword here is real, and by that I mean we need to acknowledge that we are not there yet. But I want to believe that with the data in the table, most people would agree that there's still a lot of work to do. I found quite fascinated how in feminists there are passionate women, well, feminist people, defending one thing and some other very passionately defending the opposite. Think about prostitution, quotas, surrogacy, both in the name of feminism, both with the interest of women at heart. I, of course, have my own personal opinions and I believe that in order to defend some value we have to give another and, and it's a matter of waiting which one is more relevant, more urgent, more important for real equality. But I've learned to debate and to appreciate those conversations as people from the same team and building something. It's a great opportunity that we have to learn from each other and keep opening each other's eyes and keep growing together. And, you know, it's okay, it's agree to disagree and keep informing ourselves and growing if we keep in mind that what we have together is bigger than what separates us. We need to have those conversations because, speaking with myself, I'm not the person I was fresh out of uni, the one full of ambition, naivety, the one who was completely unaware of her privilege. Because people proved me wrong. People opened my eyes, they pointed me to books, shows, films, they kept having these conversations with me. I'm not going to hide who I was under the carpet because this is my journey and I think it's exciting to see how nothing is set on stone. People change and people grow and because of that societies change and societies grow. I'm not here to tell you that I have the answer, that I'm at the end of some journey that you have to go through and every journey is my own because it's not true this is all happening we are all building this we are all asking ourselves questions and we are all moving forward so we're all in a journey to listen and challenge and discover and do our own work while inviting people to do theirs but what I'm gonna ask you is to keep making the statement to keep talking, to keep calling out the jokes, to keep informing people, ed educating people, sending people to watch and read and, and talk diverse. I mean, who knows? There's the chance that one of them end up becoming a passionate person, just like me, writing children's book, even building a website about feminists. And the worst case scenario is that they won't and they think you're really annoying, but you know, you've ruined their coffees and their dinner and this is another fun part of being a feminist killjoy. So, yeah, this is the person I am now. I am now and I'm aware that I need to keep learning and growing and the things that I believe now, they might not be relevant in some months, some years. I am okay with that and I'm here to challenge my thoughts and hopefully challenge some of yours too on the way. So my goal, the one that I'm committing today to do in this extremely awkward video, is to invite you to be part of my journey, to let you in, uh, to hopefully become part of yours. So let's talk, hit me with questions.